Hey, Owen Wellmet. My name's CJ, and I'm a gambler. This here, ask due diligence. He's a bear. Welcome back to the podcast. Coming to you aboard the Starship Minotaur, the first of the great bulls. Currently, we're on the moon. Please join us. If you care to drop us a like and a sub, that helps us grow, and all growth is bullish. Okay, let's get down to business. So this upcoming week will be perilous, as we have a shortened week for the holiday. One thing that I'm thankful for this year is that the market's only closed for a single day. Remember, gang, it's not an addiction if you're good at it. Also, no one likes a quitter. I love selling options on four-day weeks because you kind of get an edge in that uh, you have one less impactful day. Beta still takes her cut, though. Let's start off with the craziest thing that happened first. On Friday, I was doing my crypto day trading thing, and all of a sudden I see GYN listed on the biggest losers of the day on Coinbase. What can I say? Um, I'd like to buy the dip. Anyway, I saw that it was a stable coin and that it had a very volatile week. And with a recent dip, uh, maybe I can make some money. So I tossed a little in. Not a lot, but a gambler is going to roll the dice, you know? We do what we do. I currently have no exposure to foreign currencies of any kind, and this is a fairly low barrier to gain that exposure. After decades of very low inflation, admirable, Japanese shoppers resist paying higher prices, and businesses seldom try to lift them. Companies hoard cash and stint on investment, and keep the labor market so rigid. Workers can't easily move to growing businesses and get their pay increased. I want to be crystal, this would not be a fun system to be involved in. But it does speak to the robustness of a currency. Always look to what's doing well when there's a general downtrend. Anyway, I put in 203 bucks, and an hour later I sold it for 275 This intrigued me. Okay, so what is GYEN? It's a crypto that's been around since March, that's allegedly really stretching that word, a stable coin. It's based on a one-to-one -one ratio with the Japanese yen, or at least it's supposed to be. Okay, here's my story. I waited till I saw it dropping again, and pretty hard and sharp this time, and every other dip this day had been bought, so no reason to think this one was not going to be different. It had real momentum, so I decided to gamble. I took most of my daily profits, a little over 600 bucks, and I tossed it in. Well, on the dice, I accept that this is a ridiculous situation by design. And I even told myself that if I needed to be ready at a moment's notice to just pull up my phone and sell no matter what happened. So maybe a half hour later, I checked my phone. And I instinctively screenshot it because I think it's bugged. I think it's a fun picture, close the app, whatever. Reload it. Whatever I just saw is confirmed a second time. My $600 has ballooned into the tidy sum of 51,000. I go straight to the sell button. In retrospect, I probably shouldn't have closed the app in the first place and wasted any time. C'est la vie. The number was there, so I go to sell, and it tells me to break it up into smaller amounts. Okay, I try 9K, 8, 7, does not work, no tango. I try to convert it to USDC, and it just hangs there. I have to close the app again. I try to convert it to a few other cryptos, and suddenly, H, okay. Ian is no longer supported by Coinbase. You must download the Wallet app to use it. I begin to wonder, is this some elaborate ruse to make me download their stupid app? But no, I check Reddit and Twitter, and a lot of people are in a very similar boat. A few thoughts. A stable coin based on a currency might already be a little unstable, but the Japanese yen's not supposed to be. If you really think about it, are any of them stable? This question got me to game theorizing out a bit. If it's based on the underlying, then on some level it's a derivative. Not on some level, it's what it is. It's a derivative. For instance, if the Japanese yen collapsed, we'd expect to see something that's based on it follow suit. But here's the rub. A fun thing can happen with options that's known as a gamma squeeze. Okay, I'm working on my version of a The Greeks episode at some point, but essentially, with an option, the closer to the money it is, the more it's worth. But each tick above that increases 
by a substantial amount, the rate of increase, that's what's really interesting here. It's a variable that at best is guessed at. It's a predictive model, but it's hard to be a truly accurate one. There's too many variables at play. Now then, so what is a gamma squeeze, the nuts and bolts of it? It's what happens when a stock has extremely high open interest on its options chain and the price of the underlying rises so suddenly. The sudden increase in price, that's the rate at which it increases, causes the delta on the open option contracts to rapidly increase as well. Once again, the rate of increase, forcing market makers to buy extra shares to hedge their positions to keep it as delta neutral as possible. Market makers are there to provide liquidity. They don't actually want to own anything. They're trying to stay as safe as possible. If enough contracts are open, when the market makers buy extra stock to stay delta neutral, they will cause the price of the underlying to increase, thereby causing the delta on the contracts to increase again, thereby forcing themselves to buy more shares to remain delta neutral. So in their ever failing quest to remain delta neutral, they help to actually run it up in an unforeseen circumstance kind of situation or more properly, a self-fulfilling prophecy, the craze around something can make something itself skyrocket up. Okay, that makes sense. But what doesn't is, how does this happen to a stable coin? Like, really, though? What I think happened is they messed up a decimal and a comma on their end, and not only did it make people think they hit the jackpot, and some of them did. Some were able to sell and withdraw funds. As crazy as it sounds, you need to be ready for this at a moment's notice. You need to be ready to look at a crazy number on your phone because this simulation is clearly breaking down around the edges. What's that, Didi? There is no such thing as truly safe. Fair enough, old friend. Fair enough. Well, that is the story of how my 600 bucks went to almost 51k. Currently, it's at 420. <laughs> and I can't do anything with it. Sometimes you win. Sometimes you lose. Sometimes your app decides you're kind of done for the day. Or in this case, the weekend. A glitch that takes the whole weekend and has locked out multiple accounts while the thing it's based on is going up. Yeah, that's not the best. It's very hard not to short Coinbase tomorrow, but realistically, it'll probably just go higher. I was telling my wife about this crazy story yesterday on date night, and she was asking me, aside from this crazy thing, what's my ever biggest gain on a single trade? Oh, allow me to get nostalgic. It's GameStop. Easily GameStop. Sir Ryan Cohen. 210 bucks turned into 6,000 in a single day. Options give you options. Good times. Okay, now for some news. Ken Griffin bought the last remaining copy of the US Constitution up for auction, and he beat a united group of crypto investors to do it. He'll donate it to a museum and get a nice tax write-off, and at some point in the future, he'll sell it. But all of this is also to send a message. He can buy whatever he wants, and then make money off it. And no one can stop him. Hubris is a funny thing, though. As always, time will tell. So Rivian's about to plummet to the depths of the nether regions, since no one's actually doing a deal with them. Okay, this is the reality of any pop that happens on potential before any type of deal is signed. This is the rumor part of it. It's almost certainly a smokescreen for large institutions to plan their pets accordingly. If there's too much hype to be true without any type of deal, well, it's basically the same as when a show kills off a character off screen. Yeah, they're not dead. The same concept. Emotions are exploited in the market, not solely for entertainment, though there's that, but also for the money. Roku is developing their own original content. This is a new playbook, by the way. Find a way to start generating content because that's a huge part of the new economy. It's impressive on their part. It's not that people don't want to work, mind you. It's they don't want to commute to the office to grind out a standard work week when we have proven, beyond all shadow of a doubt, we don't got to do any of that. These moves are the latest examples of how pandemic-related disruptions are forcing companies to kind of reevaluate what they do and exert supply chains themselves if they can, get them closer to home, or in some cases, get them in-house. Multinational corporations got an early shock in the health crisis when the borders closed with restrictions, lockdowns. No one was expecting it, but we're going to learn some lessons here. Some of them are 
making moves sooner rather than later. Okay, story here. So I took the kiddos to get their first shot on Thursday. Team Pfizer for life. Yeah. Anyway, we went to Walgreens, and I started looking around after I heard someone asking the sole employee there why there wasn't anything on the shelves anymore. The employee laughed nervously and uh, then went to the back. I got intrigued. I went walking around the store. Easily 20% of their shelves are bare. And it was everything, too. There's like nothing there's a surplus of. The Christmas aisles were pretty bare. That's a major trucking shortage, gang. Also supply chains. But expect these bottlenecks to get worse before they get better. Automated transport trucks. The market is begging for you. Also, CVS is closing 900 locations nationwide. This is bullish AF. I love when a company gets rid of the bloat. Next on the docket, maybe the receipt size. Okay, let's talk a sector. XRT looks to be breaking out of the channel. It's been stuck in for about a full year now. This is pretty bullish. The rise of retail is upon us. I like Victoria's Secret. I think it's a sleeper play that's making a lot of moves on the manufacturing front domestically, but also branching out into a lot of things that aren't just lingerie. I actually like a lot of retail spaces right now, as I think we've got something new fueling this economy. We've got nostalgia. We don't want names that we know and remember fondly to perish just so hedge funds can squeeze out another half a point percent profit while still failing to beat the market. The future is a mixture of the past that gives fuel to the present. Let's go over some moves for tomorrow, shall we? Okay, big move first. It's Farfetch, F-T-C-H. I think we're at the perfect time here before we shoot back up. One of my favorite plays to make is to buy right after an earnings fail, because if it misses, it goes down. See, if something meets earnings, nothing much happens. Like, people take profits here and there, but it's not a big deal. If it beats by a lot, then things go up like crazy before settling back down. If it misses, and people overreact and sell, or really, if they're just tired of being in the position, want to be out it's towards the end of the year, this fear dragon will scorch a field in its wake. But from that field, we can plant our fledgling calls. Options are 26 days out from here, and you don't need to be in the money to make money here. Just need to buy during a good dip and ride it till it retraces. Remember, picks get slaughtered, so sell when you're profitable. Okay, second play is OXY. Full disclosure, I already got a few calls. They're two weeks out, and uh, they're 29 strike. Let's see what happens. I'd be surprised if we don't see a good spike in the next couple of weeks, but either way, I'm not holding these past Wednesday. Protecting your downside whenever possible. And also, don't be afraid to say the words. I was wrong. Say, I mistimed it, if it helps you, or the ego. Your account doesn't care what vernacular you use. It just reflects your decision making. CVS has earnings coming up. And if after that it doesn't fall too much, then it's set up to run. Calls and options for this move, but entry is key. Barnes & Noble. Okay, personal story. So we take the kiddos. We got four of them, by the way. We take them out once a week individually, and we do a kid date, and we get them a book. We go there right before close sometimes, and there are always people shopping. This is in the middle of the week, mind you. Yeah, Barnes & Noble isn't going anywhere. There's a... Reclaiming of the classic taking place here, and a big part of that is big bookstores. A lot of the revenue isn't even from just books anymore either. People will spend more money so long as they have a nice physical space to encounter. It's about stories after all. You can also just kind of look around without having to spend a dollar. I respect that. It'll last because we want it to. Because we need it to. PRG. This is my first time playing this ticker, but I like what I see. It's finally filled the gap, and it's holding these levels very well. I'm intrigued. CURV is a holding company that includes women's clothes with a bit more exposure to a basket, so less risk overall. I like the technical setup here for potential. Couple that with a nice short percentage, and we're off to the races very soon. 
When shorting stops being price discovery, then it's breaking its intent. Actions have reactions, though. It's not just about the money. Sometimes it is about sending a message. You made worse bets, after all. Greedy bears end up as rugs. <clears throat> Nothing. Go back to bed. Well, that about wraps up this one. I appreciate your time. Ah, oh, yes. Today, gang. Get good rest. Remember to hydrate. Consume something green if you can. Ready up, bulls.